Summary of the Other Two by Edith Wharton The story The Other Two is about a rich couple named Mr. and Mrs. Alice Waythorn who get into a fight when Alice's two ex-husbands get involved in their personal and public lives. Even though Alice has a strange past and has been divorced twice, she is accepted and even liked by the Waythorn's New York friends. This is mostly because she is so good at following social rules. He also admits that he is in love with Alice's social ease, which goes well with his somewhat unstable sensibilities. The story starts when Mr. and Mrs. Waythorn get back to New York from their vacation. Their trip was cut short when Alice's daughter Lily Hascott got sick out of the blue. Mr. Waythorn is waiting for Alice at the dinner table. She was upstairs checking on Lily. Alice finally shows up with a very worried look on her face. She tells Waythorn that she got a letter from her first husband, Mr. Hascott, saying that he wants to come see Lily at the Waythorn house while Lily is sick with typhoid. Unfortunately, Mr. Waythorn has to agree that Hascott can see his daughter, even if it's just because the law lets him. Try to forget about it, Mr. Waythorn tells Alice. It's hideous. As her husband tells her, Alice changes the subject to something happier and says, how pretty everything is. Waythorn gets to work an hour early the next day, so he doesn't have to deal with Mr. Hascott. He's going to stay away from home all night. Waythorn meets Alice's second husband, Mr. Gus Varick, on the elevated train on his way to work. Varick tells Mr. Waythorn that the top partner at Waythorn's company, Mr. Sellers, is sick. Varick says that the illness happened at a very bad time because Sellers had just hired him as a client. When the train gets to Varick's stop, the men go their separate ways. It is reported at work that Sellers is sick. Mr. Sellers' work will be given to Mr. Waythorn because he is sick. In the afternoon, Waythorn has lunch at a diner close to his office. He sees Mr. Varick again, this time seated a few feet off. They aren't as close as they were on the train, which is good, and Mr. Waythorn acts like he hasn't seen Varick to avoid making more polite but awkward small talk. Waythorn sees Varick eating a lot of delicious food and wonders if what they said in the morning had any effect on Varick, who seems so sure of himself and not easily upset. After avoiding Mr. Hascott, Waythorn goes back home to eat dinner. Each day, he and Alice talk about boring things that happened in their lives. Mr. Waythorn is proud of how happy Alice is to tell him about her useless, boring day. Waythorn doesn't tell Alice what he talked about with Varick. The couple goes to the library for coffee and liqueurs after dinner. Howdy Thorne asks Alice if Hascott came by, and she says that he did, but she didn't see him. Mr. Waythorn thinks about how good it feels to have Alice while Alice serves coffee. After 10 days, Sellers is still sick, so Waythorn has to take on his clients, which includes Varick. That's why Waythorn is worried about what his friends will say about his business deal with Varick. Lily keeps getting better, and Waythorn starts to put up with Hascott's visits. Lily's fever goes away on Hascott's visit day the next week, and she is now out of danger. Because Waythorn thinks he is out of danger, he lowers his guard and gets home at a normal time. He goes to the library and meets Hascott. He calls Hascott a small, sallow-looking man. Waythorn is shocked by how real Hascott is. He thought Alice's first husband would be a disgusting brute, but the man in front of him is nice, quiet, and very normal. Waythorn feels abused by this strange person being in his house. Even worse, he is shocked and disgusted by how little he knows about Mr. Hascott and Alice's life with him when they were married. Waythorn sees that his wife has lied to him, despite how graceful and tactful she is. He says that her calmness is just a studied negation of that period of her life when she was married to Hascott. Waythorn feels bad for Hascott because Alice also tricked him. On his last visit to the Waythorn house a week later, Mr. Hascott tells Mr. Waythorn that he doesn't like Lily's French maid and would like her fired. When Waythorn sees how much Hascott cares for Lily, he feels bad again for judging him and stupid for making Alice holy. Alice starts to cry because Mr. Hascott is getting in the way of Lily's life. Waythorn tells Alice in a cold way that Hascott has the formal right to be involved in Lily's life. 
The maid is let go because Haskett asked for it. The winter goes on, and Varric and Waythorn's work relationship grows to include their friendship. The group of friends is thrilled that the Waythorns have chosen to be generous and give the hosts the chance to choose between them and Mr. Varric instead of their own. Waythorn, on the other hand, has only formally accepted Varric and Hascott. He is still anxious and jealous. He married Alice because he thought she could shed her past like a man, but he has since changed his mind because he sees that Alice's past is still present in the way she acts and the things she likes. Hascott goes back to the Waythorn house one afternoon to see Lily. It's Waythorn who finds Hascott in the library and gives him a cigar. Soon after, Varric walks through the opening, followed by the footman with a tea table. The three guys sit together in an odd way. When Alice walks in to have tea with her husband, Varric tries to do business with Mr. Waythorn. She sees the two surprise guests and feels good when she sees Varric. Haskett's presence bothers her almost too little to be noticed. Her well-known politeness takes over, and she becomes a friendly and helpful hostess. The story ends with the Waythorns and their two guests sitting together in the library. She serves them tea. Waythorn takes a third cup of tea with a laugh. About the author. Edith Wharton was born in 1862. Wharton led a privileged life filled with private tutors and trips to Europe. She performed as a debutante in 1879, which was her official entrance into upper-class society. Wharton's easy life as a child would affect a lot of her work. She started writing a story called Fast and Loose in 1877, even though people didn't support her much because of her gender. Verses is a collection of songs that came out on its own in 1878. The wedding took place in New York in 1885 and was to Edward Teddy Wharton. Wharton wrote more than 80 short stories. She is best known for her novels, though. The other two came out for the first time in 1904. The following year, one of her most famous books, The House of Mirth, came out. For her book The Age of Innocence, 1920, Wharton won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction in 1921. She died in 1937 in France. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.